What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today we are still talking about uh, the latest AMD CPUs and here with us uh, we have the Asus ROG Strix X670A. So, uh, this motherboard is very nice in my opinion because it gives you the opportunity to do some complex things like memory tuning, but uh, like in five minutes you have, let's say, most of the job done. But uh, let's get straight to the point and let me show you. The goal of this video is uh, to show you a quick and easy way to do the memory tunings and some other stuff. Because, uh, you know, memory tuning is not uh, so easy usually, but uh, this is a ROG motherboard and the ROG motherboard usually have a lot of memory profile already preset in the system. So we leverage that function to enable us to make like a five minutes overclock, but really, really effective. And then we can do some more tuning if we want, but at least with five minutes, you set the system, let's say, to catch that 90% of the free performance that you might have. So let's go to the BIOS and see what we can do. When you do the first boot, this is usually what you have uh, in front of your eyes. Uh, one thing that is very important is to check the version of the BIOS and always update with the latest version, especially now that the platform is new, uh, because uh, I tried a lot of functionality and they are not so well tuned at this moment. We have the basic, but I always suggest you, especially in the first um, three, four months that the platform is new, to always check the new BIOS and install it, because they, usually they do a lot of good stuff. So at this point, when you have updated the last BIOS, you click F7 and you find this. So if you start the system like this, uh, you will probably get the JDEX pack for the memory that is like uh, 4800, like this. So it's not so good. The first thing to do is to enable the DOCP profile of the Expo uh, if we have newer BIOS or newer memory stick. But first thing first is to uh, put the XMP or DOCP profile. In this case, uh, we have a 6400. And uh, what I suggest you is not to go uh, this far because uh, even though this specific configuration is stable at this frequency, uh, it's not good because sometimes if you have like, let's say a less lucky CPU, it's not going well and you have instability. So I suggest you to do the 6200. I tried with many sticks. I'm using Hynix sticks and I suggest you to, to do your research and buy some Hynix sticks that can run a 6200 really easy. So now we are going to check the performance of the system like this and then I show you the magic trick. Usually I use a, a Blender benchmark that is free and it gives you a good perspective of the system because uh, with Blender you can see improvement uh, even in the core of the system, so with the cores, frequency and the memory. So it's very well balanced between the brute force of the CPU and the memory tuning. So you understand if the tuning that you are doing is going in the right way. So always check with a benchmark that gives you a score like this. You can do with other benchmarks, but make sure that uh, is a benchmark that is very complete. Let's say uh, Cinebench is good for the cores, but it's not good for the memory because you have the, if you have the memory at XMP or well-tuned, it doesn't change a thing. So pick a benchmark that gives you a very, very uh, balanced score between all the components of the system. So I suggest you to use Blender that is free and is easy and is fast. So now I'm going to the BIOS again, I'm going to show you the trick of the memory, and then we go back here and see the results. All right, so what I'm suggesting to you is that uh, you go into the timing control and to use uh, the preset. Because when we have a ROG motherboard, we have a very nice stuff that is uh, the memory preset. These uh, presets are made by overclocker or people that really know what they are doing, and they've made a manual tuning for you easy to use. Uh, I don't suggest you to go to the 6400 uh, because usually uh, they use a good stuff and uh, not every kit, not every CPU can support this, at least now in this phase uh, with uh, uh, this uh, BIOS, this version, probably because it's still too early right now. So what I'm suggesting you is to go to the safe way and do this uh, 6200. I've tried this profile with many kits and this worked 
100% of the time. If you have Samsung, use a Samsung. If you have Micron, use Micron. I suggest you to do your own research and buy the Hynix kit, like G-Skill, some Kingston above 6,000 MTs. In my case, I have the Hynix, and we go for this profile. So you click, OK, and that's it. What is the good thing about this profile? If you go with XMP, you have only the primary set. In this case, we have the primary and all the other. So as you can see, we go here from 151, we go to 38, 96, 48, 9, 14, 490, and so on. So as you can see, the timing that uh, are in the XMP, so in the auto, the motherboard pick uh, the most safe timing, but uh, sometimes they are really, really uh, high. In this case, we can have a good boost in performance. So, so the good thing about this motherboard is that uh, he does uh, the uh, hard job for you. And once you load this, you just need to check that uh, 6200 is uh, selected here because the voltage are automatically set for you. And I tried many kits uh, and it's pretty safe. Another thing that you can do is to raise the frequency of the fiber, the Infinity Fabric clock uh, to 2000. But uh, I saw that sometimes not every application like to go unsync because uh, if you go to auto, uh, it goes into the synchronous mode. If you set it manually, you go outside sync and some application or some games benefit from it to have a higher FSCLK frequency, some not. So I suggest you to try first uh, with auto check the results and then come back, set it to 2000. Uh, some system can go to 2133, but I suggest you to use 2000 that's stable almost for every system that I tried. So uh, do this uh, carefully, do the benchmark and check the results if it's better or worse, because you may have uh, a hit in performance to go uh, not in sync. So now I go back to Windows and we do the Blender benchmark again. And here we are. We gained uh, six uh, points uh, that uh, it may not seem a lot, uh, but trust me, in games uh, and other applications, that five, five to six, seven points uh, can be a really uh, nice thing because some games uh, are like 10 to 20% more. And uh, in the next days, I'm going to show you a bigger suite of benchmarks, mostly in games, uh, and you will see the difference between leaving the system with XMP and do this really quick and easy trick to set all the timings in manual. Usually when you do the tuning of the memory, that is the most important things to do, we can go to the CPU and start tweaking about the frequency and stuff. But uh, with this specific BIOS and this setup, uh, I see that uh, the current version doesn't really allow to play a lot with the settings because I've tried uh, a lot of stuff like PDO, manual OC and so on but uh, still I think it's a bit too early. Now I'm going to show you how to do it and explain you some really cool stuff because uh, maybe you will see this video in some months and then there will be other version optimized to do that. But so far, uh, if you're watching this video and you have this, this motherboard right now, don't waste your time because it's not worth it. When you do the memory, it's just enough to make you a good settings, but well, if you watch this video maybe in a couple of months uh, that there's a better release of the BIOS and you want to tinker with it, I'm going to show you how it's done. So there are a couple of things that you can do to improve the frequency of your system. The first thing that uh, was uh, okay in the previous uh, version of the Zen CPUs was the precision boost overdrive. So if you don't know, precision boost is the normal boost that uh, is the default settings of this CPU. Precision Boost Overdrive is just uh, to extend the limit of that boost. Usually in this case you enable this, you set this to manual and you set like 1000, 1000, 1000 just to eliminate the, the, the standard limit. Uh, that doesn't mean that the system is going to uh, consume 1000 amps. No, you just uh, extend the limits. Then the scalar is uh, usually how the system will maintain, will sustain the, the clock for longer. Sometimes you it works with 10, sometimes with less. You have to make some, you have to try and see what is best for you. 
this is very useful as well because if you put like 200 this is the the maximum you will have like a maximum clock extended by another 200 megahertz in my case i didn't see that uh, is working right now but probably with the newest release uh, maybe this thing will work properly in the future so this is usually what you have to do then to make it possible to let's say to fool a bit uh, the algorithm you go to the core optimizer and you set a negative values. In the past uh, version, usually between 15 to 20, sometimes 30 if you're lucky, you can have uh, a better response. So you decrease, you just downvolt uh, the course of your system and then you trick the BIOS uh, with less consumption and you can gain some more frequency out of it. But still, I tried now in gaming and with some productivity benchmark and I didn't see any positive results so far. So uh, you can try, but uh, as maybe you won't notice uh, any difference at all. In my case, with only 15, the system is unstable. So it's actually worse than leaving it alone. Uh, you can do that uh, by core per core. So you can set a negative or positive value for each core, but it's something that takes time and uh, I suggest you not to do it right now, but uh, maybe in a later time with a better BIOS revision, I will make more videos about it. So just stay tuned and I will tell you when is the right time to do it and how to do it. And this is very good to do with a mixed workload or gaming. So you can use uh, the automatic overdrive of the system of the, of the frequency to gain more single core performance. But if you want to have best of the both worlds, so the good dynamic overclocking, automatic overclocking of the system, and a good manual overclocking in case you do some rendering or some heavy stuff, you have to go here and enable this function. So now it's enabled, but usually it presents something like this. So when you enter here, it's like this. And here you have to set the manual overclocking. So if you find the system that is stable at these settings, in my case it's not, but we will see uh, later on. This is uh, the manual overclocking settings that uh, with this function that is very important, you can enable this uh, uh, manual overclocking if you go over this uh, current, for example. In my case, I saw that eight is a good value that uh, if you game with this uh, uh, system, you benefit from the dynamic boost uh, of the precision boost overdrive. And then when you start some really heavy task like rendering, blender, something like this, and the system sense that you are drawing more than 80 amps, it switch to manual overclocking and it sustain and it maintain this uh, 5.3 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. In my case, as I told you, it's not stable probably because the BIOS revision is not so optimized right now, but this enables you to use the manual overclocking and a stable fixed frequency for heavy loads, but then it will, for example, when the temperature goes uh, below 70 degrees, it switch back uh, to dynamic uh, OC, so to the precision boost and to have, uh, let's say, a much better single core frequency. So this can really be the best of both worlds. So you can have a manual overclocking for heavy task and the dynamic overclocking of the precision boost overdrive when you game or you do stuff that doesn't require a lot of core and a lot of frequency. All right, so we are at the end of this video and I really hope that uh, with this uh, quick setup, uh, you can enjoy some extra performance because it's free. And if you are currently using a system like this or a better one, just let me know in the comment section below because we can always learn from something every day. And well, uh, if you don't know, we have a Discord server full of really nice people. And if you want uh, an help to do this kind of stuff, if you think that it's difficult, come and chat with us. As always, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one.